President Biden is absolutely squirming, and it is so unbelievable. And not one article, but two articles yesterday posted by The Guardian. Look at this headline. Biden's family reportedly tell him to stay in presidential race as blame shifts to advisors. And guys, you have not, you will not believe what I am hearing all over X, all over Twitter. The amount of people who want President Biden to drop out, want him to resign, want him to allow the DNC to nominate another candidate. It is unreal. But some new reports suggest that it's actually not President Biden's fault and that the person who's really behind this and who is actually power hungry is his wife, Dr. Jill Biden. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much for tuning in and Let's get into it. So this first article really highlights that the president had a meeting with all of his close family. And look at this. It says his family gathered at Camp David on Sunday where discussions were reported to include questions over his political future. It came after days of mounting pressure on Biden after debate in which his haunting performance highlighted his vulnerabilities and invited calls from pundits, media, and voters for him to step aside. Millions of Americans are wanting him to step aside. But look at this. During the meeting at Camp David, which included the president's wife, children, and grandchildren, Biden's family told him he could still show Americans that he is capable of serving another four terms, according to the NYT. And what people are finding so surprising is that the strongest voices that are keeping Biden in the race are his wife, Joe Biden, and his son, Hunter Biden. Can you believe it? And now Joe Biden is under fire in the most recent edition of Vogue magazine where Dr. Joe Biden is right on the front cover. This just came out today and it is so surprising what was written here. I'll read the first couple sentences just so you get an idea of what this was about, but it's not good. It starts with, if you want to know what power feels like, try to get yourself driven around in a motorcade. Flashing police chaperone lights form a perimeter as you blaze down an empty highway, waiting cars backed up on entry ramps as you pass. It's as if the world is holding its breath for you. Also, rules don't apply. And people are absolutely not having it. Bill Ackman has this theory where he believes that Joe Biden is pulling the strings because as soon as President Biden is no longer the President of the United States, that Joe Biden will become irrelevant. And that is her worst fear. Irrelevancy. Oh no. No more Air Force One. No more glamorous life. No more being treated like a queen when traveling the world. It's all gone. And that is her worst nightmare. He even goes on to say, I am sorry to be harsh, but what has become entirely clear is that the first lady values what is best for herself over her husband's health and the safety and security of the country at large. And this is obviously incredibly upsetting. You know, for a while, I actually really liked Joe Biden. I thought it was really cool that she had her doctor in education. I thought it was really neat that outside of being first lady, she had an additional job where she taught English at a community college and she was a professor. And I thought that was really, really neat. And she was an advocate for education. And I thought that was awesome. I applauded that. Truly, I did. But with all this speculation now, it's almost become increasingly more obvious and clear that Jill Biden is pulling a lot of the strings because she has so much influence over her husband, our president of the United States. One Twitter user wrote, Jill Biden is truly a monster, even after the entire planet is laughing at her senile husband because of his horrible, horrible debate last night. She drags him out on the campaign trail today. And just look at the dementia-ridden corpse standing behind her. Uh, we'll play this video, but not great. Here in North Carolina and across America, who are working hard to find a secure place in the middle class. The moms who worry that their daughter... I saw in him then the same character that I see in him today. And even though he has faced unimaginable tragedies, his optimism is undaunted. His strength is un... Hope is undeterred. Man, this really, really breaks my heart. Face unimaginable tragedies. His optimism is undaunted. Here in 
you know, this topic has been breaking my heart over the past almost a year now. I posted this video in October where I was comparing President Biden from 1987 to very recently. And it has actually recently started to get a significant amount of more views than it did over the past couple months just recently because of the debate. And I'll play it for you. And this does not make me angry. This actually makes me deeply sad. There'll be other presidential campaigns. And I'll be there all the time. I'll be there. There will be other opportunities. Wow. There will be other battles in other places other times. And I'll be there. Wow. And I'll be there seeking to share with all Americans and those who will stand with me the promise proclaimed in the communion hymn you heard me recite all across this country. Mm. And he will lift you up on eagle's wings and bear you on the breath of dawn and make the sun to shine on you. This country is going to be lifted up, and I'm going to play a big part in doing it. Come on. And this is President Biden today. I just want to say, like, man, Joe Biden was so strong back then. He was such a great communicator, even not even that long ago. There's clips playing from from just four years ago, whenever he was also sharing the debate stage. There's clips playing from, from nearly 10, 10 years ago, whenever he was sharing a debate stage alongside other vice presidential candidates. And he was also an incredible communicator then. But to see what's happened over the span of just a few years is... <sighs> Virtually every... every circumstance where a large number of people have been victimized and lost. I spoke to them. I learned a long time ago what you've all learned in your life. When someone's going through something, I'm not here to pick a fight. I'm just here to say that I am so sick of American politics exploiting the elderly for their influence at the cost of their health. That's not right. And it's so sad that this problem has become even worse. And I understand the Democratic Party is not in a good position because you know what? If polls are saying that President Biden cannot beat President Trump, well, who can? Because people are still saying that no one is in a better position to take on President Trump than him. And that's why Robert F. Kennedy Jr. just keeps making more sense to me. He has the name recognition. He has a successful career. He's an incredible, extraordinary communicator. He has great ideas. And he speaks for the majority of Americans whom are independents. Anyways, let me know what you think about all this in the comments. Share your perspective. And let's keep the conversation going over there. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for watching and listening. I appreciate your time so much. And I really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you'd like to support what we're building here, please like and subscribe. It means a lot and it really helps us out. And if you want to see even more content from me, make sure to follow me on Instagram. I'm going to be sharing a lot more on there. Thank you so much. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.